Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. All right, today I wanted to do this cool um, larger than mat, off the mat project. Um, I'm still on my Sesame Street kick because um, this file is in Design Space. So how cool is that? Then we can all work on the same file. Um, so I thought this was a really cool file because we can make it really wide, right? Each character is its own little thing. So I was thinking of trying to make this 30 inches, 30 inches wide. And what's cool is when I'm thinking 30 inches, I'm thinking each character character is 10 inches, 10 inches, 10 inches. So it should be seamless. All right, so let's kind of look to see what we have here. The only one that makes me, well, let's see. Well, let's turn this into 30 inches and we can see. But before that, I wanna show you where to get, go to get this file. You wanna go to images, and type in Sesame Street up here and search. And if you scroll down, here it is. So let me click on the info. So it's Cookie Monster, Elmo and Oscar, and this is the file number. So when you're searching, if you're searching by file number, hit that pound, it, you need the pound signed with ME8D2CC. I feel like I'm taking a vision test. <laughs> and then you click on it. Um, okay, so I don't want the image, although somehow it brought up the image or the whole image set. Um, but you click on that one and then you insert. So I'm gonna get out of here, come back into here, and we're gonna do the width this time, not the height, but this length, we want that 30 inches. So let's see what we have at 30 inches. And then we're gonna zoom out so that everything is, we can see everything. Um, all right, I think I can actually zoom in here. Perfect. Okay, so um, let's see. So we have a really thin outline here. Oh, interesting. Okay, so can you see the panel over here? The panel tells you what you have, right? I mean, like here's the nose, uh, the eyebrows, the three different eyes, right? And then you see Elmo. Elmo is in three colors. He's got black, although I don't understand why we have black when there's a black background here. But anyway, we have um, this color. So it has slits, but he, it's a full image of him behind, as you can see here. And then we have um, the guy with the trash can he stretches out all the way over here. So it's one whole image. So we're gonna be doing a lot of slicing in this one. And then look at the blue. You can tell from the blue, even though he's only right here, he's a whole, he's connected to everything else. So here's what I think we should do. Um, all right, so I think the easiest way to do this is to duplicate this image. And then this one, this one's gonna be our template, okay? So, and what I mean by that is it's gonna stay there, but we're gonna change this image to, we're gonna flatten it. So it's just one layer, right? See, the whole thing is this now, so that we don't get confused with which piece is which piece. But this is going to serve as our our outline and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, okay, so first let's um, let's ungroup this, okay? And we're gonna want, let's take our blue layer. So see, I mean, even though he's only a small piece, right? He's one gigantic whole piece. So I'm not really feeling this design, <laughs> at least not for this project. Um, and maybe this is good if you were doing a card project or something and you were doing a small piece, it's very stable and easy to piece together. But for our purposes, it kind of stinks. Okay, so we're gonna grab the two. So it's the blue and our, our cut and print, right? Or our print and cut. Um, go to align and you wanna align center. You want this to be right on top of the other one, okay? Then what you wanna do is you wanna bring in Elmo because we're gonna slice him out of the blue. 
And this one we can't really align because he's not the whole thing. So, all right, I'm gonna leave it right around there. I feel like I could still see a little bit of the blue. Okay, this is it, right? So now we have the red highlighted. Scroll down onto your panel over here, hit the shift key and grab the blue and slice. So, see this part? We now have it broken up, right? So we can click on contour. And really the only piece we wanna save is this. Nothing else is really him, right? So let's hide all. We want this and we want the cutouts. So we wanna select all of that, okay? And then we don't want this. So now when I get out of this, I've got Elmo all by himself, right? Um, so he's a little big, oh man, that stinks. He is 12 by 12.64. So that kind of sucks for our purposes um, because I don't think I can make this so we still want to do the same thing, but watch. We're going to bring him up here, right back there. Um, we're going to bring, oops, hold on. I'm going to undo what I just did right there. I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to group it. I want it to move as one piece, okay? And then I'm going to move all up, I want it all to be the same, okay? Okay, now I'm gonna select all, good. And it's perfectly matched because look, it's 30 inches, right? I'm gonna shrink it just a little bit. I'm gonna shrink it to 29. Let's see at 29, if our little guy, our little guy is still big. It says it's 11.5 by 12.2. So we need to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna select all, and maybe let's go to 28 and see if we have better luck there. All right, so where is our blue guy? Here he is. He's 11.1 .1 by 11.7, perfect. This we can work with. So this is, let's save this so I can remember. Save 28 inches. Huh. Sesame Street. Okay. Okay, so now we can um, we can bring this back down. We'll continue slicing everything out, right? So now we've got our Elmo. Elmo is great. He's over here. Um, this this is this is not bad to keep because it's our outer uh, red layer. So let's change him to red though, so we're not confused. Um, that's not the red that they used there. And let's get rid of this tongue though, because that's not part of the image. So let's slice out or remove that tongue and let's see what we have. How big is this? So we do need to slice this a little bit, but you know what? Look at this right here. If we got this off, it would look really good and it would look pretty seamless, right? Because this is cut right here. So we're just gonna cut here and connect this right here. So let's do that now just to make sure that we were good. So I'm gonna bring him over here. Um, what I'm gonna do is um, let's bring in a circle because I like this shape, right? So I'm going to use that same shape to do the rest of this. Where's my circle? Oh, you know, in the last update, it used to, when you insert something, it would just pop in right where you were. Now it looks like it's popping in at the corner. So you gotta scroll over to get it. Okay, so this one, unlock it. This is what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna copy this one because it's easier to copy this one. Okay, you see how I've got that white slit or the see-through. Oops, I'm missing something, hold on. You wanna make sure that your shape covers that whole piece, okay? Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice 
and do, 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 do. it's going to give us this shape, right? Um, so here, this one, I want this back. So I'm just going to go like this and weld. Okay, so this little guy is going to help me continue this piece. So I'm actually going to arrange and send to the front so I can see what I'm looking at. I might make it a little bit thinner, but I'm going to do something like this. Okay. So grab, oops, whoa, what is this? Oh, that. Okay. I'm going to grab these two items and slice. So look at, so there's that little piece, right? Then I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to contour for a second. I only want this tip here. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to use the same piece and I'm going to bring it over here. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to grab these two and slice. So let's move this. So now that's his face. To me, that looks great because it, you know, we didn't know any better. If you hadn't seen this image before, the fact that his face is separate from his body is not that crazy. And it looks like it belongs, right? So let's get rid of all these pieces for a second. Now this one, we want to separate the two. So you're going to duplicate the image because we want to separate it into two items. So you need two images. If you needed to separate it into three separate things, then you need three copies. But let's go and hit contour first and hide all. And it's going to leave us the face, but we want the two eyes and the mouth as well. And there's our face. And look, our face is 10 inches by 9.4. So it's going to be seamless, right? And then let's on this one, we don't need the face, so let's go to contour and hide all. Um, actually, no, show all. I don't, I'm gonna just deselect all these items, okay? So is that it? And the face. All right, so here's his body. So his body is saying it's 14 inches by 6.3. I'm gonna see if by tilting this, rotating it, if it fits within something that we can cut. And it looks like it's working. So the same image by rotating it is now 11.1 .1 by 10.8 instead of, I don't even remember what it was before, I'm sorry, my mind. Um, it's Christmas, I've got too much going on. Um, but the way that Design Space measures um, length is, uh, at least the width is most left and most right and then the distance in between. So in this case, it's measuring this and this, it's not measuring what, it, so before it was measuring from here to here, so it's much longer. So you can rotate things so that it can recalculate the dimensions. So if you remember before, my height was only six inches, my height now is 10.8 for the same image, right? Because I rotated it. Because before it was more flat, it almost looked like a, like a hoagie sandwich, right? But now it's like diagonal, it's much longer because it's calculating the most, the most top part, which is this, and to the most bottom is down here and it's calculating the distance between the two. So Elmo for all, you know, I'm gonna say he's seamless. He looks great, right? I'm, let me undo this so he can go back to what he looked like. Um, there, so that's what he looked like, right? He's like this, okay? So I'm gonna bring him, oops. I'm gonna bring him over just so that you can see what he looks like. Let's group this for a second, and I'm gonna move him all the way over so that you can see whether or not he looks kind of the same, okay? So that's him. I think he looks good. <laughs> All right, so let's move him over. So we've worked on Elmo. Elmo is good. We actually need to work on, well, let's get rid of some of these things. So these are all sliced results, right? So we're gonna get rid of them. Because all that should be left up here is the 
the flattened image. Okay, perfect. So um, let's see, we still need to work on this, oops, ungroup. These little things we don't need to work on, right? These are all things that we can cut. They're all within size, so we're good there. Let's see. Okay, so this is 11 by seven, so we're good. We don't need to work on that. All right, so our green is big. So let's bring our green up here. And match it to here, okay. And then let's bring this guy up so that we can slice out the green. So I think that looks good. So we have that plus the green and slice. Okay. So the green, let, we want it in two pieces. We want this and this, right? So let's duplicate it. And I know we're in a lot, there's a lot going on, but it's okay. Just duplicate it and then we're gonna hit contour. So for this image, we only want the hands, okay? And hide all, we just want, oops, no, we want this, okay. So here, oh, hold on, what happened? Contour, hold on. We also don't want this, there we go. And do we want this? Okay, there. Um, for some reason it sliced out and it gave us this. I think it's okay because we can easily cut this off. This is a design space glitch. It should not have done that. I don't even know what is going on there, but we can fix it later. You can either cut as is and then trim this off later. Like I said, this is, this is just funky, but anyway, we'll put that over here. On this one, let's contour and let's get rid of everything except for this, right? So we don't want this. None of this. Actually, it might be easier to hide all. Okay. We want all these little pieces. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so he's 12.2 by 10.9. And I think that's going to be okay because I'm going to show you a trick as well on this one. So on this one, I think we can rotate it as long as we can get it to 11 and a half by 12 ish. Let's rotate it a little bit. Nope, I'm rotating it the wrong way. Hold on. Okay, so this is good. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit more. I'm gonna try to get this as close to 11.5 as possible. Oh, look it. Ah, it's working. All right, this is totally acceptable by design space, right? 11.498 by 11, so this is great. We don't have to worry about this. And then, um, let's see, so we're done with the green, we've got the silver. I think the only thing we have left is our big black background. Yeah, so awesome. Okay, so let's get rid of this, we don't need this anymore. Here's our, um, Okay, we don't need all those layers. So weird that they did it like this. It's such a funky design. Okay, so here's our most back layer. Um, so let's bring in our squares and make, we're basically making a grid of squares that are completely flushed with each other. And by doing that, we're gonna be able to slice up these squares or we're gonna slice up the image with the squares. And where is my square? Where did it? I'm losing my mind. Where did they drop my new square? Oh, it's all the way over here. Okay. We're going to make the square 11 by 11. Okay. So let's first change the dimensions here. Okay. Um, you could technically make it 11 and a half by 11 and a half, but I don't like dealing with half inches. And in this case, it doesn't matter. The item is 28 inches. So no matter what, I need three of them, right? Cause three of them would be 33 inches. And then this way, it's 15 inches, no matter what, whether it's 11 or 11 and a half, I need two stacked on top of each other, right? So um, in this case, it's gonna be six squares, no matter 11 or 11 and a half inches. So 
that's why I prefer 11. <laughs> okay, so just kind of put it over your image. Go to the position feature and we're gonna to round to the nearest whole number. So 11.4 becomes 11, 10.8 becomes 11. So um, this is not a good example because it's 11 by 11 or 11, 11. So the X coordinate is the one that's running across and the Y coordinate is running up and down. So you go over 11 units and go down 11 units and it's the beginning of our square. So if you duplicate this, and put this one close to this, then again you round to the nearest whole number. So 22.3 is 22, 11. So now I can show you though, that one's a better example. This was at 11, right? So 11 plus 11 is 22, so we're at 22. So in this case, you're going over 22 units and then coming down 11 units, and that's the beginning of your square. We're gonna duplicate this one again because we need one for over here. Put it really close, this becomes 33 by 11. Okay, then you're going to hit the shift key and grab your three squares and duplicate because they're already flush with each other. So now we can just take that group and put it underneath here. Okay, and this is at 11 and 22. All right, so we have six flush squares and you want that because your pieces later when you, when you put them back together, you want them to just slide up to each other, tape, you know exactly where everything goes because it, perf it has four perfect corners, right? Okay, <laughs> I know because sometimes people don't like to do this exercise, but I promise you in the long run, it helps you um, for a seamless project because everything's really like butts up to each other and it's easier for you to tape and it's also easier for you to just put together. If you don't even care about the seams, just the fact that everything goes, slides up, you know exactly where everything goes, it seriously will make a difference. Okay, here's our black, back, our black background. <laughs> Grab it, so select it, and then go to arrange and send to the front. Now we're basically gonna slice this guy up. So you wanna just, I'm gonna scroll in, and that's gonna adjust because we have no gaps, but this is what you want to avoid, something like this here, because I'm going to scroll in a little bit more even. Okay, do you see how this would cut off this little sliver? And then you need to keep track of this little, little piece and tape it and make sure you don't lose it. So we don't want that. We want everything to be big cuts. Like this is good. This corner right here is this gigantic head. This piece is small, but the bottom portion is going to be small because it was just barely over 12 inches, right? Um, so this seam is coming up here and going across here. So we have, I think we have good pieces. So I'm gonna scroll out and we're gonna slice one square at a time. Okay, ready? So we're gonna slice up this. Then this. So at 28 inches, that's pretty sizable. It's gonna look great behind your cake um, or your dessert table. It's gonna look good and it's gonna be so vibrant depending on, you know, if you're gonna use glitter cardstock, even if you don't use a lot of glitter cardstock, a little bit here and there really makes it pop. Like if you if you didn't wanna do the whole red thing, um, but his just his nose is like the orange glitter cardstock, it would be so cute. All right, so I grab here, slice, and again, it is going to be seamless, so it's gonna look really, really good. All right, so I think we have all our pieces. I'm gonna scroll out one more time. I like to rearrange all my pieces in order because when you take it off the mat, this piece, especially because you're using black, if you're using you know colored pieces, sometimes it's easier to tell like front from back, um, like glitter cardstock, my top is red, but my bottom is white, so duh, I know which side is up, right? But when you're using black, regular cardstock for me anyway, I can't tell the difference between top and bottom and sometimes I switch it up. And so I like to see where my pieces are so that I know like if I pull this piece, I know which side is, this has the left, so I know that side is top side up. So <laughs> trust me from experience. Okay, here are our nice six pieces. We can grab all of this and delete. So I think we're done. Let's go to the Make It page and see what we have. It's gonna give us a warning. No big deal, just click OK. All right, so here's our white. In case you didn't know, 
you can move these things around and make it more efficient for your space, okay? So like I flip this over, these eyes can be flipped this way, right? So the reason is because next time I use my white glitter cardstock, I have six by 12, like a nice usable piece for another project, right? Instead of, I think this was down here, it's just less and whatever. And then you have this empty space here. All right, <laughs> here are our block pieces. This is a giant piece. Um, all right, so it kind of consolidated. So I only have one, two, three, four pieces of black cardstock. Here's my red. It was saying this is way too long. I need a 12 by 24 mat. But remember, you can rotate this and keep rotating until we get to see less than 12 so you can use one 12 by 12 piece of cardstock on here don't worry that it has it on a 11 by 24 mat as long as you're 12 inches or less it's only going to cut here so even though it says a 12 by 24 mat just feed it a 12 by 12 mat all right so here's our next one looks good here's our mustache our nose okay the green was another thing this thing can also be rotated. Let me see. Yep, and look at that. Here's my 12 line, it's well above it. If you don't have a 12 by 24 mat, just click on this on the three dots, move object, and we're gonna add a new one. It's gonna create, and then you want the green. So confirm, and I don't know why I did that. <sighs> uh. We'll fix that later, it's a glitch. Let's hopefully it'll change once we go to a different mat. Okay, here is our blue. Um, we wanna rotate him just a little bit and see if we can get it closer up to, okay. So when you cut this one, you know that design space and I think I can twist him a little bit more. But in design space, you know they never cut to the 12 line, right? Um, but in this case, so I would, when I put it on my mat, first of all, I'm going to use a, well, I always use 12 by 24 mat, but if I had a 12 inch mat, what I would do is I would put my paper just slightly above the 12 to, or you can put it right at the 12 and it will cut perfectly. So just rotate that one. Let's look at the trash can. This is good. And then, oh, so, and here's our finger. And again, this one is funky. What I would do, like I said, is cut it like this. I would hand, hand trim this and, oh, this piece should be here. I don't know what is going on. I would, um, I would do this. I would hide selected, cut everything, okay? Cause it wasn't, was it gonna fit? I don't think we could have, maybe it would have fit here, but anyway, I would cut everything and then I would cancel out once I'm done cutting. Then I would go to my images and oh, I'm gonna bring in the image again, okay? Because sometimes design space is so glitchy. So let's just pretend that everything is done right. So now we're going back in and all we need are the fingers. So the fingers are easy to deal with. And this is another reason why I don't just like kind of make it big and say, oh, I like it this way is because if you ever needed to recreate something, you want round hole numbers so that you can recreate everything and everything is back um, to its correct size, okay? So, you know, if we had done 28.1, 137 that would suck <laughs> so all right here is this image again right so we're gonna ungroup it we're just gonna take so this is gonna be easy we're gonna take the green and hit the shift key we're going to slice out the cookie monster no yes we're just gonna slice out the red but the so I'm gonna slice it out and see if I can isolate the fingers, which I think we did in this case. Yeah, see, look how perfect the fingers are now. So let's go to contour. 
We want to hide all. We want the hand. We don't want the face. And there's our perfect hand. What the heck? Design space. Okay, grab all this. We don't need this, right? And then let's compare it to what we had before. What in the world, right? So yeah, it just sliced up crazy funky. All right, so delete this. We have our hand. Um, I'm going to resave this in case I ever want to actually make it. But now let's go to the um, let's go to the make it screen again and see if we can squeeze in this hand with the other green piece. Okay. All right. So it's saved. Let's go to make it. It's going to give us that warning like we need to use a 12 by 24 mat. No big deal. Click OK. Let's scroll down to our green page. Here is our green. Oh, first we need to rotate this, right? It's still too big. There, so that he's above the 12 line. And let's see if our hand fits in here. That would be lovely. Oh, it's so close. You don't want this to overlap though because it will cut into your other piece and it's gonna look, oh wait, hold on. There's a little room, right? We can move this down a little bit. Yes. So our green outfit's on one page, yay. Um, easy peasy, right? This is going to look amazing. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, questions. Um, you hate it, you love it. Let me know because if you don't want to see Sesame Street anymore, tell me what you do want to see. I'll pick another theme. Um, all right, special projects. You can email me to Anne, A-N, at theuselesscrafter.com, and I will see you next time. Bye.